pre-made designs make it super simple to get started in Silhouette Studio. And to be honest, a lot of more experienced users prefer to grab a pre-made design over creating one from scratch. It saves a lot of time and headache. However, not every file is going to be exactly what you're looking for, so you need to learn how to modify little bits and pieces to suit your needs, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. You found your way to Silhouette Success. I do hope you're going to join our little community. Today we are looking at a pre-made design for this tile card. I did design this in Silhouette Studio and I have the SVG file for sale on my Etsy shop. If you're interested, I will put the link in the description below. But the information in this video is going to be useful no matter what SVG you buy. Let's start off by bringing our project onto our design mat. You can do this in three different ways. Let's go up to File, and we can either choose Open or we can choose Merge. Merge is going to bring the project onto the design mat that we already have open. Open will open up a different design mat and place the design on a completely different mat. I'm going to go ahead and choose Merge so that it brings it onto the design mat that I'm currently working on. I'll find my file, double click, and that's going to bring it right onto the design mat. Now let's right click and delete this and head down to the bottom of our screen to bring up our task manager. If we click on our file explorer, we can find the file that way as well. And this time we are going to drag and drop it onto our design mat. Either way works. Now that our file has been brought in, we need to see if this is all grouped together or if none of it's grouped together or somewhere in between. We can do that by clicking on any one of the pieces and looking at the bounding box. This has one single bounding box around the entire project and that means everything is grouped together and we can move the whole thing around and nothing is going to get knocked out of place. Now if we want to start moving these pieces individually we need to right click and ungroup and you can see now there are several different bounding boxes and I have grouped each color group together as well. Now if we want to switch up the color of any of these pieces, let's take this green batch. We can right click and ungroup. And now this group is separated and we can easily select any one of the pieces and switch up the color. And now we can cut this with this instead of with this. Since this is a card file, we have regular cut lines around the edges and we have some score lines in there as well. When I created this file, I used perforated lines for the score lines and these will cut with the blade to make the fold. If you're using a newer Silhouette machine, Cameo 5, Cameo 5 Alpha, the Curio 2, you can use the embossing tool instead of your blade to create the score lines. But you don't want these to be dashed lines. In that case, you want them to be solid lines. So let's right click and ungroup this. And you can see that all of the score lines and the outline of the card base are selected. We want the score line selected. We do not want the card base selected. If we hold down our shift key, we can click on the card base itself and that will deselect it. And we're left with just the score lines selected. At this point, you want to right click and group those lines together so they don't get knocked out of place. To switch them up to a solid line, we're going to go right up here, click on this drop down menu and select solid line instead of dashed. Let's head over to the send page and standard cut. All of these lines are still set to cut at this point. The score lines are still selected. You can see the gray box there. And since they are selected, we can simply click on tool two, use all selected lines. That's going to set the score lines to blue and keep the outline red. Tool holder one shows that I have my auto blade inserted. Tool holder two, shows that I have my embossing tool loaded. Once we have made those changes, this is ready to go. 
we can go back to the design page, select the base and the score lines, right click and group. And again, that's going to keep all of those lines in place and it's going to score right where it needs to score. This is the only other piece with score lines and you can go through and do the same process for this. I know that sounds like a lot, but I'm going to go through and do this one without all of the explanation so you can see how quickly it can actually go. We're going to right click, ungroup, shift key, deselect the base, group our lines and set them to solid, head over to the send page, use tool to design page, select both, right click and group. And this one is good to go as well. I did create this file to be cut from a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. However, if you only have letter size, you can resize all of these pieces to use a letter size piece of paper. You're going to open up your page setup panel, go down to your media size and select letter. This is already set to portrait, which is good. We don't need to rotate any of our pieces and we can start scaling this down so that this piece, which is the longest piece, will fit on the eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. We don't wanna just resize this one though. We want to grab all of our pieces, right click and group those together. Now we can just grab this corner box and start scaling it down. Everything is going to scale at the same rate. And we want to shrink it down until this piece will fit within the cut border on the eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Because we grabbed all of the pieces and grouped them together, we know that they scaled at the same rate. So all of these pieces, once they're cut out, will still fit together. Let's ungroup this. We can take this panel here, which is a decorative panel, and set it up in here and see that there is still the border around the edges. And we know that that was scaled properly. We can grab these squares and set it up in here and see there's a border as well. So those scaled properly, so on and so forth. Now this piece here is meant to be a decorative panel for the inside here. And I did wanna mention that if you are using a pattern piece of paper, that needs to go the right way, say it's Christmas trees or whatever. You don't want those sideways. So you would select this, open up your transform panel, go to the third tab, which is rotate and click 90 degrees. So now that's going to cut the right way. You can see that it fits perfectly in there and that's ready to go as well. I made two different cards with this file. For the second one, I decided I wanted the decorative panels for the inside and for the outside. So all I did was select these decorative panels and duplicate. So I had four instead of two, and that way I was able to place one on both the inside and the outside of these flaps. And it just gave a little bit more interest to the cards. And we'll see that in just a minute. Now I do want to talk about the sentiments that are in this file. Let's right click and ungroup so that all of the sentiments are released from the cutout squares. We can move the squares away. And if you'd like, you can group all of these together and work with them as a group. When I created these cards, I used the sketch feature on the Silhouette Cameo Alpha, and I filled them in with the sketch panel. I chose the concentric effect, brought the spacing down to 0 0.005 and enabled the sketch edge, went to the send page, and set this to tool two. And of course I had to switch out my embossing tool for my pen at this point. However, I did not fill them in before I saved the file because if I leave it this way, you can fill it in yourself or you can cut this from cardstock or even vinyl. You have choices this way. When you're working with a pre-made design, you do have options. 
You just have to know how to work with the pre-made files to get the results that you want. If you've learned something new today, please hit the thumbs up. If you want to share your work, you can either join the Facebook group or tag me over on Facebook or Instagram. Go create something amazing and I'll see you in the next video.